like this. You know, holacracy apparently works well in small companies, right? It's a natural way, as Pete told yesterday, it's a natural way of work together in small companies. And we as a mankind know only one good way to work in a large company, which is hierarchy, right? With managers and layers. And we as a mankind are now looking for another way. And I can only hope that holacracy is this, because it's only eight years old. The question was, okay, if it's ideological or different, should we in a big company like Microsoft or, or Google ruin all the old stuff and put holacracy instead? And my question is, well, you can try, but this is not safe in any way. And this is not safe for the people in the company. And it's quite a weird thing when you make people feeling unsafe, in sake, to build an organization where they, feel, they are feeling more to themselves and more safe. You know, that's what's happened, what, what happened to Zappos. They say, now we restructure. Now we're doing holacracy. A lot, a lot of people feeling not okay with the holacracy, they just left. They feel threat to their work. They feel threat. They, they are feeling not safe. I have a story from my friend from yesterday. And this is kind of the same story. So here's the chief executive of the big company, and they did a diversity training in the company. You know, it's not sort of trainings when uh, you need to, how to say it, how your company integrates all these kind of people like gays, minorities, you know? All of them are included, all of them are treated equally, and so on. And right after this training, a guy from another office came to his office. And in the kitchen, there was a team making stupid jokes about gays. And now for a CEO, it was a disaster. Like, why, why, why did you do that? We just had a training of, of diversity compliance. Why are you making jokes in front of the guy from the United States office who will make some, you know, conclusions about us. Well, I, 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 insane or what? Well, the answer, <laughs> they are not insane, okay? They're programmers, they're smart. The thing is they don't give a fuck, they don't care. They simply don't, don't care about the stuff that disturbs that, that CEO so much. They don't care, they program motherfucker. That's what they do. And why should they? And that's what I fight a lot within Agile, within Scrum teams. Like, you know, guys are here, <laughs> they are safe, they are programming motherfuckers, right? They don't give a shit what's, what's in front of the, of the company. And if, if the company goes down, they will evacuate <laughs> and go out to another company. You know, because they are programmers, they are highly wanted, they are high, highly paid. And really, I don't want to do, I, I don't know what to do with that. Maybe you, I need some advice from you. How can I make these people care about the whole company as a scrum master. Any ideas? Like, well, the, the answer is that, sorry, this. Well, they're interested in, well, the answer is they should be interested in something at least, right? They're interested in programming, they program. Yeah, I want them to be interested, well, more widely. Like, don't, don't say stupid jokes about gays right after driving on diversity. How can I make that? Please. Okay. Like, let them decide about more, more stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, my answer on that is, what is it? They don't care. They don't really care. Another one. They do care. Your guys care. You're, and they do not make stupid jokes about gays. Sometimes. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, well, my answer to both of, the, uh, of these questions, well, my, my friend's answer was, well, we can invite especially a gay guest into our company, and the first person who will make a stupid joke on that will be fired. Okay, a sort of, you know, good management solution. 
and this will make care the rest for sure, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I have some feeling that there is another, another answer on that. And the answer might be holacracy. Uh, yeah, holacracy is a sort of way make people care. Well, not firing anyone, at least in the beginning. So holacracy is quite a new thing. It was done, it was developed in 2008 by a guy from a software company in the United States. His name is Brian Robertson. Uh, and there are quite a number of companies adopted that. Zappos, Medium, not anymore. They, they seized holacracy a month ago. So Zappos is the most famous company doing that. And I will very briefly tell you what is it about and then well, we continue about the problems. So there are four building blocks uh, of the holacracy, four main building blocks. It's based on roles, on tensions, on meetings, and on double linking. And role is something that, in holacracy at least, that has its purpose, has its domain, has its accountabilities, and also has its metrics. And that's the, the maybe the cornerstone of holacracy. Uh, what you do is you say, okay, you're now a developer. For instance, a developer, by the way? No. Well, now you're a developer. This is your role. Okay, you have a purpose, not goal, not objective, right? But a purpose, like a meaning of your life and organization, and you must follow that. And also, you have a domain, an area where you have supreme power. No one can tell you what to do. Not, uh, neither architect, no scrum master, no chief executive, no VP of engineer, no one. This is your area, you own it. There are some things you must do for the others, these, these accountabilities, but you know, you feel this, you have this supreme area of your supreme power. That's your kingdom, and you're the king. So <laughs> it's very easy. Well, in Scrum, we are doing that for decades, obviously, right? We have a role of product owner, like product owner, and its purpose from Scrum Guide is to maximize value of the product and maximize value of what, what the team is doing. And also has his domain, product backlog. No one else can do anything in a backlog without his permission. And some accountabilities. I have a problem with metric for a product owner. Like, well, he has to maximize the value, but how can you measure that? Don't know, but that's a question. But that's, you know, that's a lot of guys uh, in Agile now don't like the product owner role, but I think that's quite a good role. It's you know, clear purpose, clear domain, everything's clear, it's easy. Why don't we use that? There's another role also for you, especially, um, as now as a software developer. Yeah? A again, well, this is a development team in Scrum. Again, very clear purpose. They need to develop products or produce. Very clear domain. They own everything how, on how they do this product. They also own their own planning. It's also part of how. Quite, quite clear accountabilities, like deliver value and plan their work, and quite clear metric. There is another role in Scrum, which I have problem with. It is a Scrum Master. Okay, what's the Scrum Master's purpose in the organization? Well, make sure, this is also from the Scrum, Scrum Guide, actually. Make sure that your Scrum is understood and enacted. But what is, what's the Scrum Master's domain? What is the area of the Scrum Master where he or she has a supreme power? Any ideas? His team, not really. What, well, not really. <laughs> well, not team, not process, what else? What is that? Facilitation. He owns facilitation. So if anyone can want to facilitate anything, he or she must go to Scrum Master and say, may I please facilitate this? I think their own behavior. Their, their own behavior. So Scrum Master owns how he or she behaves, for sure, I hope. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Yeah, but this is a sort of, you know, kind of problematic role without domain. That's, that's sometimes a problem, because what, what he's responsible for or what? He can decide by himself. Yeah, a lot of accountabilities, a lot of accountabilities, and we really don't know how to measure that, what, what they do. But sort of, in terms of holacracy, this role is not okay, for sure, it's not okay. And role stuff, well, you need to slice all the organization into these kind of roles. 
And this stuff that the most people hate about Holacracy. Because you need to do this role structure up front. That's painful, that's difficult. This is the part people hate. And also, every time you step into, well, I cannot as a manager just go to you and say, please don't write this code, because this is your domain. I need to ask uh, permission. People hate that. This is what people love, this is, because this is actually about people. Well, I'm in a role as a software, as a scrum master. Yeah, feel that something is wrong. Feel, feel that something is not like it should be. And this is called tension in holacracy. And my uh, duty as a person in role is to sense tensions I have to, I'm obliged to. Sense tensions and do my best to resolve that. So, well, conflicts <laughs> are already in the process. There are a lot of processes, and this is the one who loves conflicts. Holacracy says, well, you know, tension is what drives the company forward. If you don't have tensions in organization, well, you must be lying to yourself or you're dead. Tensions is very valuable. Tensions are what drive us forward. So hunt for tensions, feel, sense tensions, and put it, well, out, yeah, and try to resolve it. Tensions is what people love in holacracy. Well, talking about tensions, trying to resolve intentions, conflicting, you know, that's all, always what people love. And that's how it works. Well, the word is coming in, I'm in the role of developer. Yeah, I have a backlog, for instance. I'm doing my job. And sometimes I feel tensions, I feel that something's wrong. Yeah, I have two kind of meetings for that. I have an operational or tactical meeting, like a regular retrospective, when we talk about tensions I feel and asking people to do, to do stuff for me, like you can ask a product owner if you're a developer, please don't write these stupid things in the stories. Yeah, or please, please write the, these stupid things in the stories because I need them, like acceptance criteria or whatever. And if you want to change the company, if you want to destroy the role or add another role, or for instance, <laughs> if you don't, well, if you suddenly uh, understand that you don't have a, a toilet paper in your, comp uh, in, your, in your team and you need one desperately, this is a tension for sure, <laughs> right? And well, it happens from time to time. So you suggest that there must be somebody, there must be a role who orders th that orders toilet paper for us and this role is missing. And for that there is a governance meeting there you can suggest new roles, destroy old roles, or change the accountabilities, or, or do some politics. So this is also in the process. Yeah, that's what I miss in Scrum, because we have only retrospectives, but we don't have any opportunity, and now, and, and now it's built in. And again, this is, that, that looks difficult. In fact, that's what people love. People love to change the company, if it, go, if it, not ha well, if it happens according to some rules. The fourth building block is double linking, and I will speak a couple of words about that. Yeah, but I need to speed up. So, in each, oh, wow, well, okay. Well, you slice the company on these roles, on these small things, yeah? Sometimes you want to uh, combine them into larger things called circles, like meta roles with also purpose, domain, accountability, all the stuff. And in these circles, you have two special things, two special roles. And one is lead link. This is the guy who holds this, the purpose of the circle, and this is the guy who is responsible for two things only. This is the role. This guy fills roles with the people. Like if I'm a lead link of a development circle, I have five, five development roles in that circle, I need my duty is to fill them with the people from the organization. And if I miss someone, I have to do it by myself. And that's definitely not a scrum master, right? Because this is a development circle, I will have to develop myself. I will have to write code myself. Well, this is not a scrum master's role. This is more technical, technical lead or team lead or something like that. And the other role is representative link. This is a guy uh, who will help me get my chairs, finally. This is the guy who feels the tensions or know the tensions between this circle, this department, and the other circles. And his only duty is to put this on the next level and make sure it's solved. And what's the next level? Here's the next level. If you have several departments in the company with, with these lead links and rep links, 
and they, these departments working together, uh, you build a sort of super circle, a sort of hierarchy, next level, from these rep links and lead links from each of the circles. So this is a kind of super, super circle, they gather regularly, and they also trying to decide tensions, uh, decide on tensions or resolve tensions, but only between these circles. So does it sound, I don't know, logical? Does it sound like a board of directors, but for the, for the circles? Well, that's what people like actually about holacracy. Now you have a chance to talk directly to the finance or to the HR and say, you know guys, we ordered some chairs half a year ago. We still have none. I think there are some stupid procedures within, within your circle. Let's talk about that. Well, I suggest to resolve it somehow. And this is the place, this is the place where you, can, you have to talk about that and you have to resolve that. I don't know, actually in Scrum you don't have such, such a place. In any other process you don't have such a place. Holacracy prescribes you to talk with the other departments you're working with regularly about the tensions, about the problems. That's it about the holacracy. Uh, actually, how it will work when I order, order chairs next time. What do you think? Oh, let me show you again. These things, will they make my people care about making stupid jokes about gays? No? Why not? Well, there's nothing about people making stupid jokes here, right? Nothing. Nothing. And that's the problem. That's the tension I feel in this conference, and I want to share it with you. All these processes, all these agile values, agile values, as people call them, are very little about people. Unfortunately, they have to work with the people. Unfortunately, we still have to work with the programmers who are people. And with the customers, we sell sometimes to the customers who are more or less organizations, but also sometimes, sometimes are people. And these processes, these talks, are very little about people. Yeah, only a few talks, well, thank you to Steven. Today was the first talk about people, and yesterday also a couple of, and also some, some couple of talks later. But this is very little about people. Yeah, holacracy is a little m bit more about people, this, in this part at least, yeah? People feeling bad, and they have some instruments to fix that. So I have a little hope that holacracy will help. But there are some bad news for you again. So if some of you look at this, think, well, that's, that's easy, I want to try it in my organizations. Yeah, the bad news are that that's not an easy thing to do. And I'll explain why. Well, first, please, some questions to you. Let's test if it's easy for you or not. Well, please answer that. I don't want to take commands. I don't want to jump in and lead your team, usually. And one is not very often or not really, and five is very often. Well, you know, please show me your answer, like fingers. Five, four, two, three. Well, my answer is four. Thank you, thank you. The, the next one, to what extent you are orderly, disciplined, and rule-abiding? Again, one is not really, five is always. Can you please show your answer? Five, three, three. Well, my answer is two, thank you very much, thank you. Well, most of you, <laughs> most of you are abiding rules, that's cool. Do you say things that are true but perhaps inappropriate? that might alienate people you're close to, and sometimes people might think that you're a jerk, an asshole, although you're not, of course. Yeah, how, to, how much is it about you? Well, if you do that very seldom than one, very often, that's fine. Please show me. Well, my answer is four, <laughs> five, even five. Yeah, I'll be careful. <laughs> yeah, last question. Are you cultivating, this is the weird one, are you cultivating an interior life using meditation, prayer, or some kind of regular discipline that stills the mind? Yeah, if you don't do that one, if you do that, then five. Four, again. <laughs> one, well, my answer is one, I don't do any, any kind of this stuff. But this question is quite weird, isn't it? It's not, it's not familiar, it's not, it's not regular question on a software development conference, at least, or management conference. 
And the bad thing is that, you know, in our companies, people are working very, well, work, people working in our companies are very different. And they value very different things. Yeah, we would like they value all one, most, most, mostly same things, but the things are different, people are different. Well, this is a sort of, you know, spiral of evolution of values. Like on some stages or in some departments, they, you know, value the form, value the existence of the department, like auditing. Yeah, sometimes they value identity, that they are different from the other departments. In some departments or on some stages of development of the company, they value delivery, they value things done, things being done. Okay, just do that. Doesn't matter how, how, well, in which way. In some departments, they value effectiveness. And this is more about processes, order, and this kind of stuff. And this is about leadership, standing in front and, and leading a team, this kind of stuff. Some uh, departments are very innovative. And this is the place where all top management lives, like here, right? They want control, they want effectiveness, they want procedures in place, and also they want to be competitive, they want to be innovative, they want to be better than the, co the, the, than the competitors, okay? This level is also quite common. This is about connection. This is where HR departments or talent management departments live, right? They, they are very disturbed about are the people connected to each other? Does, does everyone know each other in the company? And so on. And finally, this one is also quite a weird one. Uh, this one is really caring about if you are true self on your work. Yeah, does your work uh, satisfies your life goal? Or you just, you know, writing the code and that's it. Or you really can be yourself on your work. And the bad things, b bad news are that Agile is mostly here. And the companies and business are mostly here. And most of the departments of your company are mostly here. So if you're trying to come to them and at least try to sell Agile, you will feel some resistance and you will feel some misunderstanding because they're living in a different world. You know, the environment is different. For instance, you go to an accounting department and say, you know, guys, well, let's do sprints, let's do the retrospectives, let's work on your processes and say, you know, you know what? <laughs> we, we need, uh, well, we need to comply. Well, because the guys from the, the check-in, check-in authorities will comment, we will not tell them. We cannot tell them that on the latest retrospective we decided not to pay taxes. Well, that's stupid. Yeah, we need to comply. We need to follow the rules. Go away. Yeah, and the same goes with the top management. If you go to them and say, you know, guys, let's help all our developers, let's help all our employees be more true selves on their workplaces, the top management will look at you and say, you know, <laughs> that's a brilliant idea. But if you can prove that this will lead to a more profit profitable business or more quicker delivery, then that's okay. If you cannot, Sorry, that's a stupid idea. That's just a waste of your money. And that's the problem because, well, you know, <laughs> change between this and this, uh, choose choice between this and this. You have most of the company like this, and you are suggesting them this, you will fail. And again, it's very difficult to argue for holacracy or for agile uh, on that level. Well, you can promise with agile, you can promise the scrum that you will deliver faster. Uh, you will deliver more value, but with holacracy, when you have to cede all the power, to, to give all the power to simple employers, simple programmers, you cannot promise that. Yeah, you, cannot, you can't promise that they will care, you can't promise that they will feel more selves on their jobs, but you cannot promise that you will deliver faster. That's a problem. And that's why I think that the only way, the only chance you can implement holacracy on your, in your company is if that when your CEO or your owner feels it on the level of values. If your owner really believes, truly believes with his heart that making people happy on their workplaces is important, that making people true selves on the workplaces is important, only in this case, well, when it, how it happens to Zappos, only in this case 
you have a chance to implement Holacracy. Otherwise, you'll have different departments. Otherwise, the first moment something goes wrong, the first moment something goes wrong, all Holacracy is abandoned, and we go to a good old you know, command and control style with hierarchy, with managers, fixing troubles. And that's bad news. There are good news. Good news are that you can try in your departments. You can try some things in your departments. The first thing you can try is to describe roles. This is, you know, <laughs> this is a hard work. This is sometimes very boring, but you may try. Yeah, and, you, and you may try to give more domain, domains more authority to your roles. Like, give a domain to Scrum Master, let him decide at least anything. Yeah, if you want to, of course. The second thing that you can try, you can try to talk to people about tensions. Like, you know, guys, tensions are cool, tensions are nice, we love tensions. Let's try to sense tensions and to talk about them on retrospectives, for instance. You can try this. The third thing you can try sometimes, from time to time, to do this kind of retrospectives in your process. You can try to talk about roles in your company or in your department, about purpose of your, of your department. Maybe you miss some roles. Maybe your purpose is outdated. Yeah, maybe you want to choose some structure. The last thing you may, you may try, you can look around in your organization that appears that the software development is not the only part of the organization. Sometimes you need some, somebody to sell your software. <laughs> Sometimes you need somebody to, to support your software. You may ask someone from these departments from time to time, for instance, once a month, gather together and talk about tensions between the departments. And maybe there are a lot of tensions between departments, but you just don't see it. So this thing you might try and it might work. Yeah, and I hope that at some moment I'll find, I'll find my company and my people, and maybe at some moment you'll find your company and your people caring about the company, working not only in the company, but also on the company, and not making stupid jokes about gays, not, be, not because they have fear, but because they really know and feel this is bad for the company. Thank you very much, and please, your questions.